Well, hello there and uh, welcome inside the labyrinth. Uh, this is the Fort Henry Days edition and I am here with a very fascinating woman and state your name for the lovely people. Um, my given name is Teresa McGowan, but everyone out here knows me as Miss Tree. All right. um, I do herbal medicines and wild mm -hmm. herbal plants that were native to this area at this time. So no U European influence herbs. Um, like sage, mm -hmm. like lavender, those are all European in origin. Mm -hmm. So I'm out here on the frontier, so mm -hmm. unless I've carried those with me from back east, I won't have them to mm -hmm. keep my family healthy. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. And um, when did you take an interest in medicinal herbs? Well, that goes back to my mom. Okay. Um, she was in a garden club when I was oh, little okay. and she picked up a book on natural makeup, mm -hmm. how to put oh. mayonnaise in your hair, egg yolks, yeah. cucumbers, mm -hmm. and I think that we would go out in the fields and woods and she would gather things and I never saw her really give those talks, mm -hmm. um, but I knew she was doing it and when we and my husband got interested in doing reenactment, this just seemed like a natural addition. I started doing wild food feast, okay. wild foods to eat, Yule mm -hmm. Gibbons kind of thing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it, it just matured into what it is now. Oh, very cool. And how long have you been uh, making the um, reenactment event circuit? Um, pretty much for 40 years. Nice. We started, like most people, on rendezvous, <laughs> powwows. Yes. Um, then we started doing um, renaissance. Mm -hmm. um, it got a little too much fairies and they pretty much told my husband he couldn't carry his weapons in uh, he's like what's the point yeah, if I can't exactly. carry all of my weapons mm -hmm. and we found this time period mm -hmm. and it kind of coincided when I was doing um, genealogy for my husband oh, nice. and found out that all of his ancestors almost all of them were here and walked this land and Ooh. buried here and experienced these things and mm -hmm. I felt the only way to honor them is if we could try and experience it Absolutely, the same way. yes. And who would you say is a historical figure that fascinates you the most or that you find inspiring or inspires you to do what you do? I don't think there's one historical figure. I think it's the unnamed women who are who were out here. Yes. Um, because if it's not for them, we wouldn't be here now. So I want to learn how day-to-day -day lives mm -hmm. went. Everything's written by the men. Mm -hmm. It's written more with soldiers in mind, with the mm -hmm. men, um, those who prospered. Mm -hmm. What about the women out here yes. who came and followed their husband, mm -hmm. children in tow, carrying right. everything yeah. that they had? Mm -hmm. This, what you're seeing for most of these camps is so much more wealth than I would have had as a frontier mm -hmm. woman. Right. And so I've made it a point to try and at least experience at some point in my reenacting mm -hmm. persona what it is like to sleep underground under one piece of oil cloth right um, to walk with no shoes yeah um, and then the skills you pick up cooking over an open fire mm -hmm. hand sewing garments mm -hmm. um, treating a, a wound with just what you can find mm -hmm. um, all those things were experienced by our ancestors and we have it so easy. You don't mm -hmm. realize how hard it is. Yeah. Until you pick up a cast iron pot and carry it for five miles, you really don't know. No, you really don't. <laughs> Absolutely not. And um, what would you say, and this is something that I've been asking people today, and I've gotten some really, really interesting answers. Um, what would you say is the biggest misconception that people have of history or even the part of history that you cover? Well, I get a lot of, um, oh, so you're going to play cowboys and Indians this weekend. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a big misconception. Right. Most of the people who do this have a rich sense and development and passion about history. And they're so knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. And everyone has their own little niche yeah. in which they want to know more. And right. I'm, and. Absolutely. So mine is herbs, but that doesn't mean I'm not fascinated by so much more. And right. each time I learn something new, I can't wait, and thank God for Google, but I can't <laughs> wait to get back on and um, research that. We're all fat, we're all big readers out here. Yes. We read mm -hmm. all the time. Yes. Um, we mm -hmm. talk to people. Mm -hmm. um, 
and we want the we want the public we want you to come and talk to us because Mm -hmm. we can't wait to tell and share what we know and we want to get the young the young people they're our Mm -hmm. future here so yes definitely um Mm -hmm. and um how would you because unfortunately a lot of people tend to view history as just very dry very boring um you know very horrible whatever and they don't want anything to do with it so how would you go about maybe convincing somebody hey you know there's more to learn you know there's I mean, there's good and bad, and I mean, in everything, just like there's good and bad today. You know, there's good and bad in history. There's, I mean, it's so multifaceted. There's a lot of different people that lived back then with different beliefs, different social structures. Yeah. I would say find something that interests you that is actually truer to your, to your heart. Mm-hmm. Um, and it doesn't have to be this time period. I mean, there are reenactors who do World War II and mm-hmm. rendezvous. Um, so I say find something that just interests you and then you bring that into your own persona or who you are and some you know but jump into it come to an event talk Mm -hmm. to the people try it out you don't need to come dressed yes it's hot we're sweating (laughs) we Um, are yes (laughs) we have a great family here of of reenactors who are they are my family they they are some of the best people when you find that niche Mm -hmm. and you feel like you fit Um, those people have your back and Mm -hmm. I would say if you're interested in doing it you find this you if you think that's interesting that this looks like something you might be doing um, ask talk to us absolutely yeah yeah and um, finally um, are you anywhere on Facebook are you and if not um, where what's your next event Um, I'm not on Facebook Um, our my group is Rangers of the Ohio Company. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have a Rangers of the Ohio Company on Shutterfly. Mm-hmm. Um, and that group is actually, can I give you a brief history lesson on there? Yeah, absolutely, why so, not? Okay. <laughs> um, so in um, 1748, mm-hmm. some of the wealthy Virginians, many of them are the ones who signed the Declaration of Independence, got a grant from King George for 250,000 acres, Mm -hmm. which extended all the way from Virginia up to above Mm -hmm. uh, Pittsburgh and down into the Kentuckys. Mm -hmm. Um, And they needed surveyors to come out here and survey it. Mm -hmm. One of the first surveyors was young George Washington. Mm -hmm. Um, They had to build several um, storehouses along the way and they had to sell some of the property so they could have their grant. Mm -hmm. Um, They had started it and they built the first storehouse um, on the Yawk, on um, the Three Rivers, that's uh, Pittsburgh area. Um, and that is right at the same time that the French and Indian War started. And so they could not meet the grant demands, and um, the war pretty much bankrupt most of the investors. But for the, um, the men who were part of the Rangers, they're out here on the frontier, they're bringing in supplies, they're building the storehouses, they're cutting the first roads into the wilderness. They're the scouts, they're the, the na- they're talking with the natives, they're the hunters, um, they're the pack um, horse um, drivers. Um, that is what my husband um, used to do and um, he just recently passed and so now I am a widow on the frontier. Um, and this is actually my first event for this year after his passing. So I don't know what are events Mm-hmm. I'm playing it by year. Yeah. I have just come to the realization that I'm not the kind of girl that's going to go back east. I'm going to stick it out on the frontier awesome. with my family yeah. and what happens to us. Yeah is going to happen to us. Oh, that is awesome. So, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I enjoyed this. Um, I hope I find you somewhere on the web. Absolutely. You will. I'll give you one of my business cards. So, all right. And now this was interview number three for the uh, Fort Henry edition of Tiffany's Labyrinth. And I'm Tiffany Appen, and I will catch you all probably later on this weekend. Mm Burdock has this quantity, so I can keep doing this all all week mm-hmm. okay and keep doing this so it's in an antiseptic washcloth nice um toilet paper diaper um mm-hmm. i can yeah that's plantain for um okay. for antiseptic too but you it's edible so there's no parts that are not yeah. poisonous i have you have a toothache you can wad this up and stick it in your tooth there you, you can go take the roots and give mm-hmm. it to the baby when they're teething yeah. um i can put it into a cold stream and make a poultice for burns. Mm-hmm. Um, I can wrap it for a sprain. 
I've washed my table with it. I've washed kids' faces with it. Oh, nice. It's, it's a universal mm -hmm. plant. I can take my food, um, wrap it in it, put it in the coals, and cook my food in this. Sweet. So while other people chop this down in droves, I actually propagate this in my yard so mm -hmm. that I can come out to events like this and I have yes. I have planting or I mean uh, burdock. Mm -hmm. So I could talk all day about it. <laughs> <laughs> well I think that's really cool because a lot of people they know about lavender and sage and everything and I love medicinal herbs and essential oils and everything. So um, but you don't really hear too much about no, and these other things. There's another, yes. there's another aspect that to that too. So as I'm out here on the frontier mm -hmm. If I haven't brought sage, if I don't mm -hmm. have lavender and I run out, yes. what am I supposed to use? Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm an English origin women, a woman. Um, yes. Well, I have a Scot, I, I portray mm -hmm. Scot Irish. But if I come out to the frontier with that Scot Irish white woman mm -hmm. mentality and thinking, I most likely am going to perish. Right. My husband's a trader, a trapper. He's out and about talking to other people. Um, if he comes back and says, well, I heard that you can use um, sassafras and bone set and mm -hmm. elderberry leaves to reduce a fever. Right. I know he probably heard that from another trapper, maybe mm -hmm. a French one, maybe one who dealt with the natives. Now, am I gonna think that the native medicines and practices are savage? Mm -hmm. um, the women that were able to overcome that, to make that leap, mm -hmm. are the ones that I think most likely were able to survive and keep their families right. healthy out here. Yeah. And Absolutely. so, because I would not know what plants, mm -hmm. if it wasn't for learning that from the natives. Yes. So Definitely. Well, that's that's a thinking I um, kind of develop mm -hmm. and how I go about using the natural plants that are out here at this time. Now, mm -hmm. in, um, this is the French and Indian War, in 20, 30 years, there's so many more settlements. People are bringing in cuttings and plants mm -hmm. and roots, um, and they have their little herb gardens by then. Yes. But it's at this time period, at this point, if I haven't brought it, mm -hmm. I've got to find something else that's going to work. Right. Exactly. And that's what fascinates me. A lot. That is awesome. Yes. And there's your herbs. Yeah. I don't. I didn't bring the whole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the whole presentation. The whole presentation. No. <laughs> nice.